Hey, 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 happy day, 549. Oh, what's she up to now? Sharon Hornell's from here. That's where the she comes from. My initials. And I'm also known as Pajama Grandma. Pajama Grandma, yep, in my robes. Um, because I'm all about being against everybody saying you have to struggle to create what you want. You have to struggle and live according to everyone else's beliefs and feelings and guidelines. And it's just kind of my way of pushing back and saying, yeah, no, I can create what I want, where I want, when I want, with whomever I want, wearing whatever I want. And in a lot of instances, since I've got um, a lot of history of chronic pain and chronic illnesses, it's in my bathrobe. If I can't create and do and be and have an impact on the world in my bathrobe, then I'm in trouble because I spend too much time in my pajamas and in my robe. So today I titled this one, Yikes, You've Got This. I am in the absolute throes of a big move and this may be my last day in my office making my video but it might not it depends if I can get a couple of things changed and moved today and if I can get the internet at the new place it's not hooked up yet somebody's got to be there but nobody's been able I haven't been able to be there while I'm here packing up and moving so I say, yikes, you got this, because I keep having to tell myself every day when I go to get out of bed, I hurt so bad. I'm like, yikes, you got this. You can do it. You can get up. You can get moving. You can finish up this project and get the move done. And then it's just the unpacking and putting stuff away temporarily till I move to the next place. But it was like, oh, got to get to a temporary place and do the in-between. I've been talking about it for, I think, six or more years. I've known that. I needed to move not not I wanted to move I needed to move and the more I needed it the more I shut myself down and said yeah I'm, I'm digging in I'm not moving I'm just staying right here and let's admit I, I bought myself you know six more years than having to go through this process but it was inevitable I was gonna have to go through my collections of stuff and get rid of them now, I looked at my storage unit yesterday for the first time in a long time. Somebody else has been taking things to my storage unit. And I actually have a lot more room in it than I thought. So my whole get rid of 90% of what you own, uh, it's it's actually working. I know my, my ex-husband's laughing and my family's laughing and saying, you kept too much stuff, you haven't gotten rid of enough stuff. And I'm like, okay, yeah, but you guys have no idea how much stuff I've actually gotten rid of because I've definitely gotten rid of 90%. Now, my 10% is still too much by a lot of people's standards, but I got rid of 90%, so I'm okay with that. But it has been a big project. It is a big project. I am I am tired. I'm going to I'm going to admit. I'm like freaking tired. And the one thing about being tired is you can't catch up. You can't catch up on sleep if you miss it. We like to think we can, but you know, our bodies need 8 hours of sleep a night. My body hasn't gotten 8 hours of sleep a night. I don't think since my teenage years probably it's been a long long time so I guess I can go a little bit longer without my eight hours of sleep but in the new temporary place I might try actually to sleep eight hours and see what happens maybe for at least a couple of days after we get the physical part of the move done um, you're probably saying well why don't you just hire someone to do it well because I've got you know I'm 59 years old so I've, I found a box of stuff from high school so I've got 40 years worth of stuff that has to be gone through and had to be gone through and just gotten rid of. I, it broke my heart. I had to throw out all of my kids' stuff from their youth. You know, like a mom, I saved their art projects, some of their homework, some of their assignments, and it just got messed up. In the, it was in the furnace room of the basement. It just got dusty and dirty, and I'm sure that there's mice in there. I live out in the country, and so we just had to throw it away. And I, you know what? I don't think the kids will even miss it. But it was interesting. I, I couldn't even go through it. I just kind of fl flipped through it with my thumb and thought, oh my gosh, I saved all of this stuff. I thought I'd only saved one little box for each of the kids, but I had saved like two big boxes, two like they're called Calmar boxes, giant boxes, like the size of a big plastic tub. Should have been in plastic tubs. They would have been fine. But of course they weren't because that was before plastic tubs when my kids were in school. It was uh, uh, boxes. Things went in what we called Calmar boxes. And so... They didn't, they didn't weather that storage room that particularly well. So in the garbage they went. So it's the end of an era. It's the end of my pack ratty collectiveness. Um, throughout all of my things I've been saving to do craft projects and things that, you know, 
I love creating things and making things. And I think that's why I'm attracted to manufacturing. And so I've saved things over the years, you know, that I've collected pine cones and acorns and feathers and rocks and stones, thinking I was going to make something creative out of them, right? And never got to it, never got to it, never got to it. Too busy running my businesses and doing things. So now that my eyes are getting to be toast, it doesn't make any sense to try to create and keep visual things to make things out of as with my for projects. So I threw all that stuff away and, and sent a bunch of the crappy, decent stuff to Goodwill, but all the things I'd collected, just threw them away and let them go. And so it's cathartic and it's challenging and it's hard and it's an emotional thing, but sometimes that's what we need to do. We need to move on and let go of the things that are no longer serving us. So that is going to consume me again for the next couple of days, I'm sure. Not sure where I'll be doing my videos from, but you know I will be doing them because that is my my core. It's, it gives me strength. It keeps me consistent and true to who I am. It keeps me accountable and committed to what it is that I'm doing. And it helps me keep my word to myself. So for one little piece of, of stability throughout the midst of a lot of chaos and a lot of turmoil, I will go ahead and you know I will be here every day. Um, today, what are we working on? Today is day 89 of the 90-day Influencer Live Video Challenge I'm doing with the sexy boss, Heather N. Havenwood. Heather's working on a confidence project now with someone else, so I'm excited to see how that comes out. You know, it's really fun working with a sexy boss. Being a pajama grandma, it's fun to work with a sexy boss. It, it reminds me that inside of all of us, there is so much more than we show to the world, than we share with the world, and that it's okay to be who we really are and share that with the world. So today we're talking about on the 90 day challenge, <laughs> I like to just run it by you guys, it lets me talk it out, uh, talking about help and how you get help and you know, the who, what, where, when, why and how of help for building your influence, building and doing your live videos, whatever it is that you need help with. So that's how I'm going to structure that today. It'll be the who, what, why, when, how of help, asking for help. Who do you get it from? You know, where do you go? When do you ask for it? How do you ask for it? Who do you ask? You know, who, what, where, when, why, and how do you ask to get help and get the help you need? And what do you even ask for help about, right? When do you know you need help? It's so talking about that today on the 90 day challenge. And then <laughs> we'll be getting right back into the big move. I've got my office 90% of the way packed up. And I decided the more and the longer it's taking me to put things together, the less I'm taking to the temporary move. So I'm going to take my desk right here, my old desk. I'm taking my lights and probably this chair I'm sitting in and I'll figure the rest out. Everything else can go into storage that's in here because this is pretty much the stuff I use regularly, but it's not the stuff I need every day. I will just take what I need to do my daily videos and the rest will be either gone or in storage because I just don't need it. I, I was talking yesterday on the 90 day challenge about the tools and the things that you need to do your live videos and to be an influencer. And the truth is you need a cell phone and maybe a window with light or to go outside or, or whatever. But if you've got a cell phone, you can be an influencer nowadays. You can do everything you need to do from these smartphones. And so I need to, to talk my talk and walk my walk by demonstrating. And I think I do that pretty well. <coughs> Excuse me, too much dust being shaken up in the house. Uh, you know, I go to the cabin and I just take... I bring my my laptop, my light. I, I didn't used to bring my ring light, but the lighting in there is just, when I find a quiet place, especially with the family up there, I gotta find a place where I can talk at a normal voice, but not and everything echoes there. It's so big that I have to kind of hide in corners and find places where I can do my videos so that it won't disturb everybody else when they're sleeping because I get up and do my videos at, usually I get up at four, get cleaned up, and I start making my videos by five by the time I plan out and do my things because I create and plan my content in the morning before I actually do my videos. Not maybe the smartest way to do it, but it's the way I've been doing it. When you do content every day, I, and I know other people have content calendars and things, and maybe I'll get to that. I just haven't done it yet. Um, <clears throat> so I plan out my content, do my videos, but at five o'clock in the morning at the cabin, most people are still sleeping. And so I don't want to disturb them. And the lighting's really bad. So I take my ring light. I've got a ring light for my daughter for Christmas, which I love. Only because it like shows more of my wrinkles, right? <laughs> so that's what I'm working on. The big move. Hopefully it'll be done soon because 
I have been approached to do my summit again. And so I wanted my summit again, my women's summit. So I'll probably do my another version of my women's summit. Maybe this fall after the kids are back in school, not that I'm targeting moms, but maybe, or maybe this fall after I'm more settled so that it's not interrupted. So I want to do a new batch of interviews, um, get a fresh start. Everybody's doing so well um, that I want to make sure I get some of the people that I had before, but but new people as well, because there's some people that I never even got a chance to approach last time that I would love to have on this time for this Women's Summit. So I'm thinking a new Women's Summit, I'm thinking another challenge, but I got two more days for this one. So I've got day, well, let's see, I've got 89, 90, and I'll do a bonus day, so 91. So I've got three more days to buy me time to decide what my next challenge is going to be. Maybe it should be something about downsizing and moving and packing and unpacking our lives. Maybe that would be a good one. If you have an idea for a challenge, share it with me in the comments below. I would love to know what would you like to have a challenge on and then how long would you like it to be? I know people love five day challenges. <clears throat> I personally like a longer challenge, not 90 days. 90 days was kind of a lot, but at least like a 21 to 30 day challenge because that's what it takes for us to really start getting momentum and really getting results in something. Five days, yep, you can change your mindset on a couple of things, but does it really be something that you'll stick to? I don't know very many people that have done a five-day challenge and then actually made massive changes and stuck to those changes in their lives unless they followed it up with whatever the follow-up thing was that the person is selling them and then gotten involved in that program. Then I've seen massive results and changes, but otherwise in a five-day challenge, um, I have not really seen a lot of, um, in my personal experience, a lot of, of long-term massive change in people. Now, I'm of the mind that you can change in an instant. The moment you decide you want to change, you can change whatever you want in your life. Um, having this discussion with one of my coaching students the other day about people can't change, and I'm like, I, I totally don't believe that. I think people change all the time. And that it's if we want to grow and want to change, that's the determining factor, whether change happens or not. It's always up to the individual that wants to or doesn't want to change. A lot of people live the same day every day over and over again in their life because they don't want to change. They've, they've reached a point in their personal development growth where they think they're awesome and good for them. And they just stay that way for the rest of their life. I don't think that's the most or the majority of the people in the population. Though. I think all of us are changing and growing and evolving all the time to the speed and the frequency that is right for us and what feels good and right for us, each of us. And that pace is different for each of us. We all march to the beat of our own little drummer and that's how it should be. Anyway, that's it for me. I got work to do. Go out, make it an absolutely fantastic day. And I will of course be with you tomorrow. Bye, take care.